Setting up equipment for the gas tungsten arc welding process is easier when approached in a logical and systematic manner. There are only three or four major components in an average TIG welding system. The power source, the shielding gas supply, the TIG torch which can be air cooled or water cooled, and when the torch is water cooled, the water circulating system. It's the assortment of gas and water hoses, cables, interconnecting cords, and specialized parts that makes the TIG setup unique. In this presentation, we're going to go through the steps involved in setting up a typical TIG welding system. And we'll be talking about gathering the necessary parts, making the connections, and testing the system. A power source specifically designed for TIG welding is the first requirement. This is a 250 amp model with built-in high frequency, gas solenoid, and remote contactor and current control capabilities. The cart provides mobility. This model includes a cylinder rack. Be sure you keep the owner's manual that came with the machine. Sign the user's certification, which sets forth guidelines issued by the Federal Communications Commission with regard to high-frequency stabilized arc welding machines. There are also drawings and illustrations showing system connections. And be especially sure that you read the safety section. There are hazards involved in welding including electricity, hot metal and sparks, fumes and bottled gases. The welding area must be ventilated to remove welding fumes and to prevent shielding gas from displacing oxygen in the welding area. The American Welding Society has several excellent publications available on safety. Now that we have the power source selected, let's pick out a TIG torch. The first consideration is the amperage of the torch. To avoid the possibility of damaging the torch, never weld with more amperage than the torch rating. Generally, an air-cooled torch is used for amperages of 200 and below, and a water-cooled torch for amperages above 200. If you're using a water-cooled torch, you'll probably use a water recirculator. It cools the torch head and the power cable. In addition to the power source and TIG torch, you'll need hoses to connect the shielding gas water hoses for water-cooled torches, a work cable and clamp, regulator flow meter, remote control for the power source, a TIG block, a source of shielding gas, and a supply of consumable parts including tungsten electrodes. The type and size of tungsten electrode depends on the amperage and if the welding is done with alternating current or direct current. These are common sizes and their amperage ratings. There are many types of tungstens, but two of the most common are pure tungsten and 2% thoriated. The green band indicates the pure tungsten, while the red band is the 2% thoriated tungsten. Generally, the pure tungsten with the green band is used for AC welding on materials such as aluminum and magnesium. While the 2% thoriated tungsten with the red band can be used for either direct current or alternating current. Direct current is used for stainless steel and other ferrous metals. The tungstens are prepared differently for AC welding than they are for DC welding. If the tungsten electrode is going to be used for AC welding, the end of the tungsten is prepared by starting an arc on a copper block. The pure tungsten will naturally form a ball. The ball should not be larger than one and a half times the diameter of the electrode. For DC welding, the end of the tungsten is ground to a point. Use the grinding wheel only for tungstens to avoid metal on the wheel contaminating the electrode. The remote control for the power source controls the contactor, shielding gas flow, and amperage. For stationary bench type applications, the foot control is usually chosen, while the fingertip control is better suited for applications where mobility is required. 
Now that we have everything to set the equipment up, let's begin. The power source primary connection has been made by a qualified electrician. And any time we're working around secondary output of the power source, the primary power is turned off. The power source output terminals are designated electrode and work. On this machine, a decal inside the door identifies the output terminals, gas solenoid connections, and has other information. First, we'll set the system up with an air-cooled torch by connecting the TIG block to the electrode terminal. The TIG block passes both electrical power and shielding gas to the torch. If you're using the same machine for shielded metal arc welding, it's a good idea to disconnect the electrode lead to avoid high-frequency loss through the cable. The work cable and clamp is attached to the output terminal marked Work. Shielding gas connections are made by removing the cap and briefly opening the valve with the cylinder pointing in a safe direction. This blows any foreign material out of the fitting. Install the regulator flow meter. Be careful not to cross thread. When it's tight, it should be in a vertical position. A gas hose runs from the regulator flow meter to the gas solenoid on the welding machine. Tighten the fitting and route the hose to the solenoid and connect this end to the inside of the solenoid and tighten. A short gas hose is run from the gas solenoid out to the TIG block. When the solenoid opens, gas will flow from the cylinder through the solenoid and through the TIG block to the torch. The air-cooled torch is then connected to the TIG block. The torch itself has six main parts, the cup, the collet body, the heat shield, the torch body, the collet, and the back cap. The torch is assembled by putting the heat shield on the torch, then the collet body, and the ceramic cup. Insert the collet into the holder with the tapered end going in first. Then loosely put the back cap in place. Insert the tungsten into the torch. Extension will vary according to joint design, but a quarter inch is a good starting point. The back cap is tightened to hold the tungsten in place. As a last step, the remote control is connected to its receptacle. The contactor and apparatus control switches are placed in the remote position. The range that the remote control has available is set by the power source amperage control. When the control is set at 100%, depressing the foot control fully delivers 100% output. When the control is set at 50%, Depressing the foot control fully delivers 50% output. The amperage setting is determined by the thickness of the material you're going to weld. If you set the control on the machine at the maximum amperage you need, you'll have better control. Slowly open the shielding gas cylinder valve, then open it fully to backseat to avoid shielding gas loss. Turn on power, first at the primary, and then on the power source. Hold the torch away from yourself and metal objects and momentarily depress the foot pedal to activate post-flow time. Adjust the flow rate to between 15 and 20 cubic feet per hour. This is a good starting point for a 332nd inch diameter tungsten. High frequency is generally set for start only for DC welding and continuous when AC welding. To connect a water-cooled torch, you'll need the existing equipment plus the torch, a water recirculating system, 
and the hoses and other parts to connect it. This is a water-cooled TIG block with a fuse attachment. The fuse protects the system from damage in the event of cooling water loss or excessively high amperages. One side of the block is connected to the water in connection on the water recirculator and the other side to the torch. This is the return water from the torch and helps cool the power cable. It's easier to make these connections before the TIG block is put on. Remember, these are left-hand threads and the fittings are notched to indicate that they're for water. Securely connect the block to the output terminal. The coolant to the torch is connected at the water recirculating system fitting marked out. Cool water flows from the water recirculator to the torch where it absorbs heat and is returned to the recirculating system where it is cooled. Generally, the water recirculator is plugged into the duplex receptacle on the power source, so it comes on automatically when the power source is turned on. Keep in mind that when you turn the system on, water fills the hoses, leaving less water in the circulating system. Turn the system off, fill the circulating system, and then turn it on again. In review then, the steps in setting up a TIG system are connect the TIG block to the electrode terminal and the work cable to the work terminal. Then make shielding gas connections. First, the regulator flow meter was installed and a hose connected from it to the gas solenoid on the machine. A short hose was then run between the gas solenoid and the TIG block. The TIG torch to the TIG block. The remote control was connected and the system was checked. When a water-cooled torch is used, the water recirculator and associated hoses are connected. The systems we've shown you are typical. Keep in mind that each application is unique and may differ from what we've shown you here. The owner's manuals that are supplied with the equipment can be a valuable guide when installing the equipment. Refer to them often and keep them for future reference. Local Miller Distributor is available to answer any questions and supply any parts you might need.